filed a civil lawsuit based on fraud. The U.S. Attorney's Office so far not commenting or denying the existence of a criminal investigation, and Goldman's not really talking about it either. Let's bring in our legal panel, former prosecutor Tom Kniff, criminal defense attorney Tamara Holder. Good to see you both. All right. Uh, I was curious as to what federal criminal fraud is, so I looked it up. And it's very complicated, but here's a summary. Let's put it up on the screen. A false statement of a material fact by a defendant who knows it to be untrue with the willful intent to deceive the alleged victim causing injury. Tom, does that fit the facts as we know them? No, I don't think it does. I mean, it's important to keep in mind, Greg. I mean, the Justice Department conducts thousands of criminal probes a year, many of which do not result in actual criminal charges. There's a big difference between an investigation and a criminal charge. The SEC generally has primary authority over some of the, the, these sort of things. And, and what the allegations are here is basically like a, you know, more along the lines of a failure to disclose right. conflict of interest rather than an intent by anybody in Goldman Sachs to sort of rip anybody off, but if which you're is generally... Will, if you're doing it willfully, Tamara, if you're deceiving willfully, if you design an investment to decline in value, you don't tell your clients that, and indeed, uh, your clients can only uh, profit if it rises in value. Isn't that not only a material fact they'd want to know, but willful intent to deceive? Well, I think that the question right now is, is it criminal or was it just unethical? I think that there's a really big difference here, and there, it's, it's really too early to know. Did Goldman Sachs not tell what they should have have told to the investi uh, investors, maybe they didn't, but that's, I think, unethical. It, I don't think it's necessarily but criminal. The emails the employees are trashing the very investment they're selling. My goodness, what deception. Well, it's not necessarily deception. Maybe it's just more of a side bet. Remember, these are very sophisticated people we are talking about. We're not talking about just regular, everyday Who's investors. Who's sophisticated? The investors. clients? The clients are very sophisticated. We're talking about banks. We're talking about people on Wall Street. We are not talking about just everyday mom and pop shops but here. Tom, I'm not sure they had those sophisticated clients had access to the fact that John Paulson was designing a collection of subprime mortgages that were absolutely the worst. They were stinkers. He wanted them to go down in value because he betted they would. He right. bet they would. Here's what Goldman is saying. Goldman is saying it's true. Paulson was betting against this thing. But the other two major investors, IKB Bank and ACA, ACA Capital, right. knew of Paulson's involvement. And they, like Goldman, were betting long. We have to remember. But what about the other investors who didn't have access to Paulson, the Paulson information? Right. But what Goldman is going to say is, look, we, you know, if this was fraud, then the only people injured were ourselves. We have to remember, Goldman made $15 million via Paulson. They lost $90 million by betting long. So it's true. Paulson was betting short. But the best defense for Goldman is going to be, look, what is our motive here? To injure ourselves? We lost $75 million net and, on this deal. You know, Tamara, I'm glad you brought it up because the burden of proof in a criminal case is far higher than a civil case. Right. And federal prosecutors sure learned that on the Bear Stearns fraud case, right? Which they lost. Right. So, so that's that, I think that they're scared in that situation. But they may, the have, thing, they may have learned from that case. They may have learned, but again, I think that Goldman Sachs here is even more... Uh, difficult to understand than Bear Stearns. I mean, they're, they're the top of the game here. The other thing that I want to point out is that the timing of this, and I, I voted for Obama, but I have buyer's remorse, the timing of this is a little peculiar. You know, Obama just made this statement about how too much, there, there, there's a point where you make too much money. Right. And then, you know, right after he said Financial that. Financial regs he's trying right, to push, yeah. He pushed it, and, and then this whole thing with Goldman Sachs. It is. It's a little shady to me. It's curious, let's call it that. Um, last question, Tom Kniff. Arthur Anderson, the corporation itself, was convicted of a crime. Put him out of business. You can't be a felon and be an accountant. I think the same thing would apply to broker-dealers, wouldn't it? That's why this is a political hot potato. I mean, look, you know, Eric Holder, he, what, my first you know, point I made, he opened up the probe. The Justice Department opens up a lot of probes. But do any of us really think that the Obama administration or any serious politician wants to see Goldman Sachs go down? I mean, does anybody remember right. Lehman Brothers? Got what, what to the... interrupt you for some right. breaking news here. Thank you very much, Tamara Holder and Tom Kniff. Bobby Digital is about to...